Oleg Klepach. It's nice to meet you, sir. Um, Same here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you were recommended by one of our guests, Clark, and he's like, man, you you got to have Oleg on. It's super interesting. Um, and he said, you're a firefighter paramedic. That's correct. Um, and I know just my brother is just got hired with Contra Costa, so I know a little bit about it. Um, and I'm sure there's people that are interested getting into into the service as a firefighter or, or as a paramedic or an EMT. And, you know, I, I would, we would like to just get to know a little bit about what you do, your okay. experience, your story. Um, so if you could introduce yourself a little bit, you know, what you do, or you can introduce how you got here. Um, I'm guessing you were not born in the United States. I was not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just, just a little bit of your story, and then, then we can go into the what you do and your daily thing. Sure. So uh, my name is Oleg, uh, as you already introduced me. I was born in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and uh, at age 13, my family have immigrated, and we actually settled in Sacramento. So we came in June 1991. Okay. And that's the best thing that my parents could have done for me as a kid. I mm. look back and I'm thankful for my parents. I thank God that I live in such a great country. Amen. Um, so uh, with that being said, I went to high school, uh, graduated from Medicina High School mm -hmm. back in 95, went right to college. I don't really have a college degree. I do have a lot of college credits. <laughs> yeah. So I've taken a lot of college um, English, reading, writing in order to get uh, my language up to speed so I can work mm -hmm. in the line of work I am currently now. So um, as of right now, I work for a fire department and uh, the fire department works. Uh, we uh, basically cover, Kusumnes, that's a Kusumnes fire department and mm -hmm. we cover El Grove and Gold area. Okay. Uh, we run eight stations, uh, seven ambulances. We have engine truck, battalion chief and whatnot. So typical fire department. Okay. I've been with Kusumnes for the past 15 years. Wow, nice. So uh, it's been a uh, interesting career. Yeah. I am definitely blessed. I, like anybody else would say, I have the best job in the world. Nice. I love what I do and I enjoy um, things that is related to fire service, mm -hmm. related to EMS, emergency medical services. So we're kind of a combination of a lot of things when it comes to fire department. We are all risk agency. So if, if people have an emergency, they'll just call us okay. for for a emergency reason or mm -hmm. emergency in their mind will still come out in their mind <laughs> correct <laughs> yes not everyone is trained and not yeah. everyone you know people might perceive an emergency or per perceived an emergency and we'll come out and help them yeah let, we don't judge them <laughs> even teach them like hey this is actually not an emergency yes and uh, we do like to educate community and so we uh come out and we do all kinds of emergency non-emergency and service calls okay we'll provide that because community needs us and when they need us and they don't know who else to talk to or right. call they call us right and it's awesome to have a good relationship with the community um the people in the community they can trust the people that are helping them they're the taxpayers know where their money is going for and it's to help them so right so I, th I think that's an import important uh aspect in life today sometimes the taxpayers neglect the fact that um they pay for this service say fire department or police department and it's in their interest to have a good relationship with them of course and our service is directly uh, proportional directly related to community needs yeah so each fire station might uh tweak their service just a little bit in order to provide for the community for the needs of the community in that specific geographical area so okay it's i really like common. how i really like how you just went into like a different uh side of the fire department besides a fire um well, i haven't talked to anybody like that um so let's focus a little bit on more of the outreach well, what kind of outreach programs or what kind of outreach things does the fire, what do you, fire academy, it's not fire academy. Department. The fire department, yeah, the fire department. Do you said you, there's eight stations? We have eight stations, eight stations and they are strategically placed, geographically strategically placed 
uh, in the community. We have mm -hmm. six in El Grove mm -hmm. and two down in Galt. Okay. Uh, we obviously have more fire stations in the city of Sacramento and metro area as well. Right. And to combine, we have a um, mutual aid agreement. We respond to each other calls. Okay. We don't have to call and figure out who's going where. It, it's all taken care of uh, based on our training. So. As far as community needs, we provide, let's say, car seat, seat education. We actually install car seats. We have an individual and public educational uh, person who actually teaches and uh, classes mm -hmm. and also uh, installs car seats. We um, do uh, open door once a year. So we, we basically open door to our community and mm -hmm. anyone can come in the fire station. People actually come in anytime, but yeah. we specifically encourage people to come in kids and educate them in the fire um safety aspect you know uh smoke detectors you know uh cpr mm -hmm. uh when and to call 911 what is an emergency you mm -hmm. know and that is education takes place to uh communities there are many community members there were not just like me we're not born in this country right and they may not understand what the fire department does and how it works and how it works so they may when they need us they may not call us right because they wouldn't think we come yeah or they would be afraid that we'll get in trouble okay. but we're not there to get people in trouble we're, we don't come out to someone's house because they made a mistake you know and there's an right. accident and we don't issue citations for those reasons we actually there to help Right. And we educate, or we educate them, and that education takes place in non-punitive way. Okay. So I mean, if someone is parking a car in front of the hydrant, yeah, we'll ask him to move the car nicely and not break their it. window. We're not going to break their window. However, if we're in the middle of an emergency and that vehicle is blocking, and yeah. and we already park our fire engines, we can't move, and we pull, we call it stretch the lines. We stretch our lines out, and we go on making fire attack, and one of the uh, a driver or we call him an engineer mm -hmm. he's also a fire he or she is a firefighter also but they drive the fire engine mm -hmm. so they call them engineers their job one of their jobs is to connect uh, a water mm -hmm. right from a hydrant to the fire engine right. so that vehicle is blocking they might do a damage not intentionally we're not going to go and bust the window right but if that's the only Whatever option it, it you know what we're sometimes going to have to break that window and stretch the line through the car if we have to We'll pay for it later or somebody it's somehow will taken care of yeah what's important is is life safety because okay. our number one goal is to uh, to save a life and life safety is number one aspect our second aspect is property okay. conservation so uh we try not to damage our property but sometimes you have to in order to uh do a better job okay so if if, if you do force the door which yeah. is very common or broke the break the window in the house in order to gain an entry it's better that way versus special if we have a known rescue yeah it, because we're there to save a life you know uh -huh. how much does life cost versus a broken window or a broken a uh you know door. a door yeah. or any other damage that has happened to a house comparable somebody is trying to save someone's life right exactly so. I, w I, w I would agree with that and uh so a question i asked before in your opinion if we see a firefighter driving down or a fire truck driving down the road a lot of people freak out today i was driving actually and there's a fire truck going da driving down the freeway uh, the highway and uh what i've learned is you pull over to the right but all these people just stop in the middle of the road and the, the fire fire truck is honking this lady's frozen she doesn't know what to do what do you do when you see your fire truck well, uh, just like you said, Ruslan, the uh, important uh, to remember our, you know, uh, our driving etiquette, yeah. right? Because it's someone's emergency. What if, think of this way, what if I'm driving down the road and I have emergency in my house mm -hmm. and the fire engine is behind me or an ambulance or a police what vehicle? Would I do? And what I would do, I would try to get out of the way. I would yell at people to get out of the way because they're going to my house. Yeah. My house is on fire, yeah. right? I, you know, so think... I don't want to, uh, you know, sound bad, but sometimes you got to think that way. So you, by by the law, uh, you have to pull over to the right. Okay. Now people do uh, freeze up. They don't understand sometimes, or they just panic. Mm -hmm. We understand that. We're basically using lights and sirens. We're asking their permission to move over so we can get to our emergency. To okay. Not necessarily our emergency, but somebody else's emergency. Right. Okay. Whether it's emergency or not, we'll, we'll find out later as we get get there. But in order for everyone to uh, you know to be safe, it's best to pull over to the right. 
Mm -hmm. Some people can, I understand because of the traffic, then maybe just if they uh, stop their vehicle where they at, we'll try to get around them safely. Mm -hmm. You you might've seen the emergency, emergency vehicles do take oncoming traffic. Yeah, It's dangerous, but we don't want to create a dangerous situations on the road while we respond. We call it code three, lights mm -hmm. and siren. Uh, yet at times we have to, in order to get around the traffic. Okay. Especially like right now, I, I was coming to your house and yeah. there's a lot of traffic. And yeah. if, if there's an emergency vehicle, you're going to try to get over as far as right as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's impossible. Right. Because sometimes other drivers may not see you. They, they might look at you like, hey, why are you trying to cut me off? And yeah. it does happen. <laughs> That's true. So we have to be careful, but, and kind of remember, best way is just pull over uh, to the right and stop. Yeah. So what is a typical day in, a, in your station or as a firefighter? Fire station. So our shift starts at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. We work 24-hour uh, shifts two 24-hour shifts. So we work 48 hours, we call it 4896, meaning mm -hmm. 48 hours on, 96 hours off, two mm -hmm. days on, four days off. Okay. So 7 a.m., uh, that's when we start our shift. About 6.45, I'm usually at, at the station. I try to get in uh, sooner, so the guys who are coming off the shift, they get to go home by 7, hopefully. They don't yeah, have yeah. to wait for me until, um, unless I'm coming from a different station, Okay. which does happen. So if I come in, uh, I relieve a person who is working in, you know, or uh, whoever's supposed to be working uh, in that spot. Let's say if I'm uh, working on an ambulance as a firefighter paramedic, I'll relieve one of the paramedics on the ambulance. Mm -hmm. He or she gives me, a, we call it turnover. And okay. they tell me, hey, this is what we have, what kind of calls we have, this is what equipment we used. And then I'll go in and I'll check out the equipment. Same thing on the fire engine. Uh, we go and check out the equipment and we are response ready. By 7.15, we're pretty much ready. Uh, you know, uh, now if you have a call in between, we'll just respond to a call. We don't ever delay a uh, response call. So 7.15 rolls around. Uh, that's when the captain goes in the office and they do conference call. So by that time, if there's any issues, we'll let the captain know if there's equipment or any other issues that could be addressed so we can fix it as, as our day goes by. At uh, about 7.30, that captain comes out of his office and we do have a, a open door policy. So that means you can sit and listen to the conference call. Okay. And then we kind of talk about our schedule for the day, whether we have a specific training. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually it's a multi-company or we call it department -wide training or we have in-house training. We can pull our house right in the house, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, have a time to work out. Mm -hmm. We have a time to eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. We have a time to... Uh, right before lunch where uh, you know or after workout usually when you already have a workout you might as well get a training done right, right? pull some hose pull it put a gear on you know uh we have a minute, minute drills all the gear has to get on you mister somehow magically in one minute right or under mm -hmm. a minute usually it happens and that's been drilled in our head starting yeah. in the academy right so and then lunch goes around we have a little break for lunch so usually in the firehouse we cook our own meals oh, okay so we usually guys bring their own lunch, same thing with breakfast. You know, we had a little lunch and then in the between, I'm sure you have a couple calls. Yeah. And yeah. then engine company usually goes uh, to shop before dinner mm -hmm. and we uh, pitch in our money. The department does not pay for our, for our dinner. Mm -hmm. So we pitch in typically it's $7 buy in. Mm -hmm. Each guy puts in $7 collectively go in. Uh, we buy uh, dinner or whatever we decide. We don't usually have steaks or lobsters yeah, yeah, yeah. because, you know, that's expensive. So we're kind of on a budget. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we do splurge uh, okay. on the holidays. Yeah, yeah. So Thanksgiving's coming yep, up. Yep, exactly. So we uh, basically, before dinner, we cook up a meal, uh, whether it could be team effort or one individual, does not matter. We eat our dinner mm -hmm. and uh, wash our dishes. My mom doesn't work at a fire station, so, <laughs> so she I can't wash, wash your dishes. We wash our dishes. We do keep it clean. We mm -hmm. clean up after ourselves. Sometimes you might see uh, dirty dishes on the table or in the sink. Usually it's guys who are in the middle of dinner and they got a call. Okay. And it's not because they're lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen that the guys just okay. eat and leave. It, yeah. You know, each person cleans up after himself or herself. Do you guys take turns cooking or cleaning uh, or how does do. that work? We do turn uh, co uh, turns uh, uh, cooking. Usually if I cook, then other guy would clean mm -hmm. or vice versa. Okay. As far as clean, we clean as a crew mm -hmm. collectively. Even the captain, each station has a captain. Even captains, there are, there are supervisors, leaders. 
they do actually uh I, I don't know any captain in my department that i know of that would not help you okay. there's captains that would clean their own toilets oh wow. uh, you know yeah there you walk in the bathroom and there's a captain captain's cabin toilet you lead, know? lead by and example lead by example a lot and there that happens a lot a lot of uh fire department captains are hands-on guys i mean you know we we're like one family so okay. it's kind of like you know if you think about it my my dad or your dad says hey go clean the dishes and he goes sits down and watch tv you know it's like <laughs> come on like, you know yeah. where usually you know you guys finish dinner you know uh, as a family one guy gets dishes maybe your mom helps you know your dad to wash them clean and put them away in a dishwasher whatever you know it's a team effort yeah uh, firefighting uh, including everything around firefighting it's a team sport okay there's no i it's usually us we you know type yeah, of yeah. Deal, so so uh, uh, a question a weird question maybe um every time i see a truck it's super clean do you guys wash them every day or how does that work we wash them uh in our department we wash them as often as we need to mm -hmm. uh usually typically we wash them at the end of our rotation because okay. after two days we wash them in between the gut engineer i thought i was i talked about it a little bit yeah, yeah. and i'll i'll talk about posi positions probably next Mm -hmm. so engineer is the guy who takes pride in his engine so imagine you have a nice car i see a bmw up there right yeah, yeah. if you really like your bmw i know it's going to be spotless yeah right 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 uh so think about that way think about is if you driving down the street and you want people to say look at that car that's pretty clean you know we take pride because yeah. the fire engine or the ambulance or the fire truck it belongs to a community right taxpayers paid for it right Mm -hmm. Do you want to, as a taxpayer, see a junky or dirty looking engine? Mm, I'm not talking, you know, right after the fire. I'm not talking right. about it just rain and the, the roads are dirty. Right. I'm talking you walk in the fire station and, you know, that engine hasn't moved in like 10 hours and it's dirty. And you're like, really? Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. paying for this. So <laughs> this is kind of reaction we expect out of taxpayers. So we want them to see the best, you know, we, right. want, we want them to see our best performance. That's why we train there. We're kind of their insurance policy that we don't have to use. Yeah. But when they call us, they are expected us to, we are expected to perform at the best of our abilities, right? right. Not, uh, well, I'm kind of, you know, somebody's calling me, I guess I got to go. I'll to see you house. at 8.30. Yeah. We got to get there. We got to take care of business, you know? Yeah. There's there's no messing around. So that's awesome. Yeah. So when when it comes to fire service, uh, typically fire station. I'm I'm talking Sacramento area, and yeah. many areas are very very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, la, uh, station might have an engine company, and mm -hmm. if you're working for Metro and our department, uh, you'll have three firefighters on the engine. City of Sacramento has four. They mm -hmm. have a little bit higher staffing, and they're busier. Mm -hmm. So we have an engineer, the guy who drives the fire engine. He's responsible for entire engine mm -hmm. or our truck uh, and all the equipment, make, okay. making sure it's functional, make sure it's working. So if anything does break, we we got a way. We we got to know it, it needs to get fixed. So we're you know there's a way to get that things done. The guy who sits up front, mm -hmm. front passenger, that's a captain. Shotgun, shotgun He's is shotgun. shotgun. That's the guy in charge. He's a captain. Okay. He or she is because I say he, but I mean. We have male and female captains, right, right. and in any agencies, there are male and female firefighters. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, it's combination. So you might see a young guy, you might see an old guy, you might see a young girl, or you an know, doesn't girl, matter. Yeah. Yep, it's it's a it's a captain. Uh, whether it's uh, whoever's in, that person is in charge. Mm -hmm. The person in the back is the firefighter. We call it right, right in backwards. Old fire engines, you would sit backwards. Yes, yes. And we have capability in our engines. I like to sit, sit facing forwards because I got to see what's going on. I'd be able to peek a look at the captain's screen to see mm -hmm. if, you know, when special, when there's a call go mm -hmm. out, special if it's a medical aid, I want to know what's going on. You know, if somebody calls in and says, I'm on medical aid, you're kind of showing up without knowing what's going on right. versus like somebody says well i have difficulty breathing or i have a chest pain so i kind of at least my idea, i can pr prepare myself and at least be ready for, or at least have some general idea okay well i have a plan yeah versus you walk in and you expect a fall and now you you know somebody says it does happen person has fallen you think like oh well maybe somebody fell broke a leg or whatnot you walk in and they're not breathing and you have to do cpr yeah that's totally different mindset and you have to move gears much, much quicker versus like you already know okay this guy is not breathing okay i'm gonna move quicker versus like uh the guy fell in the bathtub and he mm -hmm. needs help yeah okay well those are two different things right right right, right, right. so 
So the fire and now we'll move on to the ambulance. Yeah. Ambulance have also has a paramedic and a firefighter, right? Uh we have EMTs and paramedics. Mm -hmm. EMT emergency medical technician. Uh basically um it's very difficult to compare in a hospital setting because it's a little different. Uh EMT would usually help paramedic, the assist in paramedic in any skills that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Uh paramedic is advanced level uh and would be a highest med medical authority on the scene of an emergency. So even sometimes when paramedic is on the scene and the doctor comes in and he or she says, hey, I'm a doctor, we might ask them politely to leave. Wow. Unless, really? unless they are willing to take liability and take care of the patient and jump with us in the ambulance yeah. and, and treat and transport that patient to the hospital. Right. Then we definitely will, you know, unless we know, you know, a, a, uh, example being a couple of weeks ago there was a vehicle accident and it was fatal collision mm -hmm. the doctor who came out who happens to come across that he was emergency room physician mm -hmm. and he was known by he was known by paramedics he came up to the ambulance and says hey guys i'm doctor so and so and they're like oh yeah we know you uh that one is fatal so you might want to work on that one yeah, and yeah that's perfectly fine you know okay. that doctor will will take the liability on him him or herself mm -hmm. basically so there's a lot of liability when it comes to that because we have to do uh perform to our best of our ability we cannot right. just walk up to a person and say well i know you're sick but you know what you don't need an ambulance it doesn't work that way <laughs> or like I, we don't feel like helping you this way or another right way. we have to provide service whether okay. you know there are some issues with that individual whether they mistreat us we are professionals we've been paid for this taxpayers mm -hmm. are expecting something out of this actually a lot of it out, out of this and we have to perform to best of our abilities that's awesome dude honestly oleg it's so nice to hear like your your how you think about this like that that a, a firefighter a paramedic l wants to be there and he he knows that he's expected to perform at it at it with quality and you know to the best of your ability like you said um i think me listening and people listening to this are it kind of reassures us in our fire department and our paramedics that hey they're getting the training they need they're helping us out and i mean i i have no doubt because just seeing calls being answered driving on the highway or um fires you know being answered you never see a firefighter think twice before you know they know what they got to do they run in the house attack the fire or or mm -hmm. get under a car to try to, to try to rescue somebody so mm -hmm. honestly i appreciate that and thank you so much for that thank you um the next thing is why why the fire department you came to the united states in 90 One. 91 graduated in 95 mm -hmm. um if I had to bet somebody a dollar, I'd bet them you'd probably you were the first uh, Ukrainian firefighter in Sacramento. Uh, yes, it happens to be one of the first Ukrainian firefighters what? out of the immigrants they came yeah. at that time. Yeah, why, why, why the fire department? How'd you? How did well, that happen? It's it's a long story. I'll see if I can make it short. So yeah. um, I did want it to work in the medical field. Okay, and uh, I wanted to be a doctor, um, but I don't think I would be able to. Well. First of all, college and the cost of college and and all of that combined, it was it was kind of scary. It was it was for me, it was kind of scary. Yeah. Um, now, uh, what has happened was my uncle. He was a firefighter back in Ukraine. He okay. has passed since, um, mm -hmm. but I've talked to him numerous times, and I I was inspired by him. Mm -hmm. And then I did uh, took EMT course. That was back in 1997 at Sierra College, mm -hmm. and that's something I wanted to work on an ambulance. Okay. And in, I still was in Ukrainian or USSR mindset that doctors work on ambulances. Right. They still do in Ukraine, but they're do a, they do paramedic work. Yeah. I'm not trying to discredit them. It just right. if you place a doctor on an ambulance, the doctor will do as uh, as much as paramedic because there's only so much you can do in back of the ambulance. Right. Until you reach emergency room. You only have so much resources. Right. Re resources. So uh, and so that's when someone comes up. It's you know uh, it's more than twenty, probably forty or so. Back in seventies, someone decides say, hey, you know what? Why don't we train these guys and call them paramedics and we mm -hmm. put them on ambulances? They can do as much as a doctor. Yeah. Or or at 
put them at the scope of practice that they can do this much because that's all they need to do. Because in reality, there's few things they can do better, but that's something that can be taken and emer at emergency room. Or if you have a doctor, you know, based on statistics, there's only so many procedures. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense to have a doctor on an ambulance. Right. And then, you know, imagine your ambulance bill. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean? Having a doctor. You you be you become a doctor, you know, you spent so many years in, in college and yeah. now you can't just make $20 an hour. I'm right. just giving you an example. Right. Work on an You're never going to pay off your student loans. Exactly. So now, and it totally makes sense. The yeah. system works. You know, the system isn't perfect, but the system works. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, I went to Sierra College, got my AMT, and I decided I want to work on an ambulance, and my English skill wasn't the best. Yeah. So I decided that I'll get married. So yeah. 99 i, I got married i can't get a job i'll get married instead <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of my mindset yeah believe it or not i got married i worked for this uh, cable company uh -huh. until i got laid off okay. and i and i was like really what i do now i open a newspaper and they had an ad for an amt for the private ambulance company i applied i got a job and i started working as an amt and then i realized i gotta pursue my career back yeah so i work in an ambulance and th during that time, you know, um, I've changed uh, my job, switched to a different ambulance company, which was better pay, mm -hmm. better trained ambulance company, and it was a lot more professional. So it was it was great. And I decided to go back to paramedic school because during that time, I went to paramedic school and I lasted one semester because oh, wow. my English was horrible. Yeah. So I took a lot of ESL classes, okay. uh, you know, reading, writing, speaking English classes mm -hmm. to improve my English. Went back to college mm -hmm. after I was m married. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I didn't have kids yet, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, because that was that was a, that would have been a challenge. Yes, yeah, another definitely. you know, because I look at people with kids, and I'm like, good for you. Yeah, because uh, I'm I'm mm -hmm. super happy when I hear anyone going to school, getting any kind of education, especially having raise the kids at the same time yeah that's it's a for me job. it's almost unrealistic but more power to those people yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i went back and uh at that point i had one year more than a year experience as an amt on an ambulance because paramedic school does require amt experience okay and uh i went through american river college mm -hmm. uh a paramedic program and they had a requirement which i was able to fulfill and so I went in and back and I got my paramedic uh, program out of the way. It took me about two years. Mm -hmm. So about 2003, I was working paramedic on a street. Nice. Okay. We joke around and say I had a license to kill. Yeah. <laughs> well, first coming out as a paramedic license, you're on your own. And no now, experience. And no, yes, well, no experience limited. as a paramedic yeah. besides the clinical and paramedic internship. With the preceptor yeah they're um, on my own the preceptor yeah. was like my safety net yeah so now it's it's nothing and i remember very first call was i had a critical call with child not breathing wow out of all the calls so anyways it was a challenge however uh, i had a great partner mm -hmm. and empty partner who was a mom so mm -hmm. she knew how to deal with kids yeah i had no, i haven't had a kids yet so yeah. to me dealing with kid that specifically that kid yeah, was yeah. a little challenge but anyways I was able to manage it and I look back, I'm like, wow, what an interesting experience. That's so that's awesome. So you went you went to paramedic school. Did you get hired as a paramedic? Did you how did you know to apply to a fire station? What happened? So I got I upgraded to as a paramedic and while I work in an ambulance company, they upgraded me to a paramedic and uh basically uh they didn't have much, they didn't have a paramedic position. So I was working AMT mm -hmm. and paramedic, what we call out of class. Basically, uh, anyone took vacation, called in sick, whatever, I would just fill in that spot, paramedic spot, and work different ambulance units throughout mm -hmm. the area. Okay. Now, I needed one year of experience working with fire department. So while I was in college, I was applying to fire departments, trying to get a job. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I did, I I studied in the ambulance between calls and I read, read firefighter books, firefighter job books, and of course, AMT and paramedic books. Anything I could get my hands on, I was reading. Back then, we had no internet or tablets. Right. There was no Facebook. Yeah. So there was a lot of book reading. So okay. um, I have different, basically, few departments offered me a job. Eventually, 
but uh, one department that I chose to go with was at that time was Elk Grove Fire Department, mm -hmm. which eventually we merged with merged with an another department, the City of Gold, and it became Kasunas Fire Department. Mm -hmm. So that's the part I'm, I'm currently working for. And when they offered me a job, and I talked to uh, the captains and the chiefs who offered me a job, I realized that's the department I want to work for. Wow. And nice. I've been there for the past 15 years. Wow, that's awesome. Quick question, backtracking a little bit. A little bit. You said 2003, you graduated as a paramedic. Um, 2001 happened before that, 9-11. What, what were your feelings or how, did, did anything change? Did you still want to pursue the career? There was a lot of, a lot of people in the service, firefighters, EMTs, lost their lives and, and still live with, with the after effect Mm -hmm. of 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 what happened uh 2000 uh september 11 2001 i was driving in my car mm -hmm. to work i was working for the ambulance company and i just turned the turned the corner marconi and half i remember as it was today kind of yeah. you know and uh i heard i was i had a music on and i had a it was early in the morning yeah and you know, all of a sudden, emergency broadcast came across, and I could not believe that what was happening. Yeah. When I got to work to the ambulance station, I was watching the news, and it was just unrealistic. It was like in a horror movie. Uh, that actually made me want to work harder mm. to pursue my career. Okay. So it so, was an, an encouragement for you. It was, yes. Unfortunately, it was. And as we know, 343 firefighters have died. Yeah. And like you said, long-term effects, a lot of firefighters are still dying as of, uh, especially New York or any of those firefighters who were helping at ground zero. And at you, and it, it is related to September 11 attacks and that's cancer uh, and other illnesses that have affected them after the incident. Diff different lung disease and stuff like Correct, that. Correct, yes. So when you sign up as a f in the fire department, do, do you guys sign waivers? Or I mean, you're you're literally risking your life for for the, for people. You know you can hurt yourself. You know, is there programs for you to take care of the firefighter if, if something happens? So uh, there is. So when I applied for fire department, I knew what I getting myself into. Mm -hmm. My wife knows about it mm -hmm. uh, personally. I do talk about it a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Life insurance. Yeah. I don't sell any insurances whatsoever. <laughs> but I'm advocating and mm -hmm. I might tell, if I have time, I might tell a story later. Now, uh, fire department has a, a light, light on duty, duty death. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you die on duty, then there are certain things that happen and your family will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And that's why my wife is ben beneficiary. She mm -hmm. will inherit whatever I have in my retirement mm -hmm. uh, account. Uh, let's just say that way. Uh, my department does have life insurance policy on me that mm -hmm. my wife will get. And I do have personal life insurance policy on myself as well, mm -hmm. you know. And by me knowing uh, things in the fire service and outside the fire service, we firefighters think of a worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. And that kind of how I go by. And that's why I have life insurance policy specifically for my, myself. Mm -hmm. If anything does happen to me, whether I'm on duty or off duty, my wife does not have to go open a GoFund account. Yeah. And be, it's it's unfortunate I see it a lot. Yeah. I'm not blaming those people and people don't understand sometimes, yeah. but uh, life insurance is the way to go. And it's it's a cost of a cup of coffee for a few cups of coffee in an entire month. That's your life insurance policy. Yeah. That's not that difficult, you know, yeah. uh, to get. And so I do have for specifically for myself and, mm -hmm. and my wife doesn't have to go around and uh, open GoFund account and or worry about getting a job i'm the only sole provider for the family my mm -hmm. wife is a at home mom with kids and uh so sh if anything does happen to to me financially nothing will happen in mm -hmm. my wife uh in my, my wife's life and my kids life they are they are going to be taken care of uh till they graduate college and my wife will be taken care of for the rest of her life wow that that's that's good to know um, that the people that are risking their lives for us, you know, can be taken care of. You, you mentioned your kids. Are any of your kids uh, inspired by you to, to be in the service? My son is. Your son is. I have an 11-year-old son, uh -huh. and he is uh, loving it. He, uh, 
loves everything that has to do with fire department and when he comes by the, me um, while i'm on duty at work yeah to station visit he loves getting in the fire engines and so he's been around at his entire life yeah and so every time when i ask him anthony who do you want to be i want to be a pilot and a firefighter just in case the plane catches on fire <laughs> so everything has a backup plan and he yeah. wants to i want to be a um you know scientist and a firefighter in case this that science lab catches on fire right <laughs> so everything has That's to awesome. fire so That's as a awesome. matter of fact a couple of days ago I, uh when we went to gym he went to a kids club and mm. he drew a picture and he drew a picture of a firefighter fire engine the house on fire and the airplane the helicopter about and he's he was su super excited and i was looking at it i'm like hey this is awesome cool picture anthony he's yeah, like yeah. yeah i know and he started asking me all the questions what happens if you can't handle the fire will yeah. you call for helicopter drop the water on the wire i'm like i will what about the airplane I'm like yes we will oh that's so cool you right know? all and this so equipment <laughs> get it. that's that's true it's like i think they have like these little um fire lego sets actually oh, yeah. they, they do because my, my my kid has a little helicopter mm -hmm. lego set so yeah that's that's awesome that yeah. You said you were inspired by your uncle and, uh, you know, now, now your kid's inspi inspired and from other firefighters or servicemen that I've talked to or a service woman, they were, you, they were inspired by either a family member or by a close friend. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it kind of usually runs in the family type of thing. It, it sure does. And sometimes it runs between, between friends, yeah. you know, and then um, I'm, I just want to say, just in general, uh, and it's more in Slavic community because Slavic community does not really trust the government. I'm talking about Soviet era. Right. Uh, the government's out to get us. Yeah. Uh, one thing I gotta say, working uh, for a government for so long, so many years, and I have seen different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the government, uh, American government that has spent a lot of money, billions and billions of dollars on, um, safety of the uh its citizens mm -hmm. we're talking sacramento county alone probably would a multi-million dollars we're we're talking hundreds and hundreds of million yeah. dollars on the public safety that is just you you can see it you know all you got to look over right here there's uh, uh firefighter planes that call fire yeah. california fire department just got brand new airplanes and they're flying around those those pilots some can say well they're wasting money i'm saying no they're training yeah. and Sometimes when you train, you have to waste a little bit of money on fuel, yeah. right? In order to get better. So it's not really based on money. It's money well spent. Oh, d definitely. Because uh, then when there's a fire, you're actually producing productive and treating. Yeah. That's exactly right. And then the other thing that about fire safety, just in general, or public safety, you know, I can, all I have to do is key up, key up a microphone on my radio station, right? My uh, portable uh, mm -hmm. uh, radio and I can ask dispatch, I need a helicopter. And yeah. dispatch is gonna come back and say, uh, I'll get you a helicopter in 10 minutes, in five minutes, and the type of a helicopter, yeah, yeah. or whether a helicopter will come or not. Versus in some countries, I'll say Ukraine, that's where yeah. I'm from, <laughs> yeah. that may not be unrealistic. Well, uh, I mean, and <laughs> it's, it's, you see the fire, back when I visited Ukraine, you see the fire trucks in the United States, those fire trucks are in museums, you know? I'm just like, man, how how are they effective? How could these people be effective here? I mean, they do it somehow, but definitely not as effective as the United States. Yeah, they're uh, probably uh, understaffed, underpaid, um, n not not always trained. Um, it's just uh, you know the culture. It's not the firefighters' fault. It's more likely when you go higher up in in the chain of command mm -hmm. their bosses their their i'm sure there's some breakdown in um training and communications and not always their bosses may be firefighters they might come from different background they've never been the firefighters where they, they don't in, know what it takes they don't know what it takes and you know there i'm sure there's a certain level of corruption that takes place that uh the residents or citizens are not in the first place that's true and it's it's unfortunate where in the United States in uh, you know I was, I was speaking for our department mm -hmm. all the captains battalion chiefs and the higher uh, higher ranking officers in our department all of these guys at one point were firefighters mm -hmm. they were promoted from the bottom up yeah none of these guys came in and they said 
you know what? I my was dad's a pilot. The governor. Yeah, my dad is a governor, or I was a pilot in military. Now I want to be chief. It doesn't yeah, yeah. work that way. Uh, you know, I cannot come in the fire service and become a chief. Okay. It starts at the bottom and works works my way up. Now, if I need to, if I want to transfer or any other departments are higher in specific mm-hmm. rank, and I, I'm qualified for it, I can definitely put in with my experience. I put my resume in, and they choose to hire me. Then it's a different story. Okay. So it's very different than so some other countries operate. How different is it to get a to get a job as a firefighter? If say I'm brand new, I'm brand new. I just got, I just went to school. I got my. Very good question. I got Very my, good. I don't even know what I need to get. What do I need to get to, to be qualified? So I actually took notes and I think it's um, uh, not a one way to go about it. Yeah. So there are different ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, first of all, for especially younger generation, younger kids, no one uh, at age 15, I want to have a car. I mm-hmm. actually bought my own car when I was close to 16. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even qualified to drive, but I had my own car and I would get in trouble because I couldn't drive without permit. I still did a neighborhood and my yeah. dad says, no, you can't do that. Yeah. You get in trouble. Right. And I didn't get in trouble. I didn't get an accident. And I realized that was not a good idea. Yeah. So first thing and foremost, if for younger kids, younger uh, men or women or girls and boys stay out of trouble. You know, uh, in order to get a job at fire department, you got to pass a background check. Mm-hmm. you got to be honest person because somebody can hand you a ring and say hey can you put this ring in my dresser mm-hmm. and somebody's so it's entrusted people trust the public trust us as a firefighters mm-hmm. and that has happened to me people says hey take this necklace and this necklace looks very expensive can you put that on uh, on a table in my house and mm-hmm. the lady might be outside you know and mm-hmm. you're like okay yeah, and you do that because that's what public expect to do, mm-hmm. you know, and that's very important. So you pass background check first, and that's one of the aspects or steps of getting hired in the fire department. Mm-hmm. Uh, driving a record. You will be driving emergency vehicle. You mm-hmm. got to have your driver's <laughs> record clean because yeah. fire department will, won't hire people with bad driving records because their insurance will, policy will say, our provider will say, hey, guess what? We can't insure you because of this one driver. Yeah. The, he or she has a bad record. No, nobody wants, I mean, it's very right. difficult, you know? Not in the fire service, even in the police department or any, let's say, delivery. You know, yeah. Amazon is not going to hire me or Uber is not going to hire me with bad, bad driving right. record or, you know, so. And fire service, it's it's emergency vehicle. It's a, f- a fire engine weighs uh, 44,000 pounds. That's 22 tons. Wow. And so if you're driving fire engines, you know, and that vehicle cost, let's say half a million dollars, right? you know, you have to be trusted, right? To be driving such a vehicle. So guess yeah. what? Got to have a good driving record. Yeah. Um, one thing I'd say, study, educate yourself and study some more, you know, college, high school, private school, whatever it is, whatever it takes, I'd say that's important. So those, those, that has to be, you know, uh, each individual has to be willing to to study. So, so study what? What classes? Are there certain certificates? There are specific certificates, yes. And when we talk about study is we're talking about uh, EMT, emergency medical technicians uh, class is mm-hmm. the first. Okay. Uh, and that is about three to six months, depending which school you go to, whether mm-hmm. it's private college, summer or regular f- semester okay. uh, through the college. Uh, and that's basic emergency medical technician and the fire departments in our area will, will hire EMTs in mm-hmm. order. Every firefighter is as the bare minimum has EMT certificate. Okay. Next level is a paramedic paramedic. Our department specifically hires paramedics in past so many years. Mm-hmm. We have not hired anyone but paramedics. And just currently we run an academy of 20 firefighters and all of them are paramedics. Oh, nice. And so in order to become a paramedic, you got to have EMT. You cannot just go to paramedic school and that's it. You have to take your EMT course, Mm -hmm. have some uh, type of uh, work experience. Mm -hmm. And then whether it's volunteer, emergency room, or a combination of both, or Mm -hmm. working even on ambulance, because Mm -hmm. once you get your EMT, you can work on an ambulance. You can apply for a job as EMT. It's not a driver. A lot of EMTs get upset when they say ambulance driver. (laughs) It is actually EMT. It is is a position in in an ambulance company and in a fire service and in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. So, and that is a qualification. And so, uh, and that's not, uh, that's a step below EMT uh, Mm -hmm. or paramedic. So you're 
you're working as an MT and you can go to paramedic school and get yourself educated and become a paramedic. So AMT course takes about 150 to 200 hours, mm -hmm. where a paramedic course is about 1500 hours. Wow. So about yeah. two years, paramedic course broken down into two uh, different, uh, three different sections. Uh, didactic, that, that's uh, one semester of just in classroom tra and training, whether it's hands-on, uh, you know, you, you're basically working on mannequins, you're working on each other, you're doing assessments, you're talking, you're interviewing people and all that kind of stuff. You, mm -hmm. you have to have those co communication skills down. You got to have those uh, trainings down, uh, you know, certain things you got to do with your yeah, eyes yeah. closed, basically. And that there's a lot of training involved. Uh, uh, that's additional hours, sometimes even weekends and stuff. Okay. And then a uh, clinical time when you, uh, if you're a paramedic program, you go through a uh, clinical time with the hospital mm -hmm. and you go through different departments, such as emergency room department, labor and delivery, uh, ICU, intensive care unit. Okay. You actually get to see a surgeries and you get to do a live intubations. So you get to do perform okay, this pr procedures. Define intubation. Intubation meaning a when someone is not breathing. Yeah you get to place, use specific tools, mm -hmm. and those tools are usually used by uh, doctors or advanced nurses, mm -hmm. and you get to use a tools to put a tube about this long into someone's airway. Okay. So that's called an advanced procedure, we call it intubation. Okay. So you get to uh, get that experience in the hospital setting, in, mm. in a controlled environment, in in front of physician and physician will, will assist you with that mm -hmm. so you actually get to work with the doctor oh nice. as a paramedic you you get that training done and then your last step is uh internship you get to work on an ambulance with a preceptor mm -hmm. you'll be a you know there's usually two guys working on ambulance okay, define preceptor preceptor is a teacher so currently uh, i um or we call a teacher or field, uh, field training officer okay uh depending where which area you work in our department we call them we call both precept paramedic mm -hmm. preceptor so i'll i'll get a paramedic student and i will train him or her for 480 hours oh 480 480 hours oh. in ambulance okay. and they have to have a 40 advanced contacts we call the 40 als contact so it's not just 40 patients, but they would have to start an IV, mm -hmm. which is advanced procedure, intubate, do a CPR or any critical patients. They gotta have 40 critical patients mm -hmm. in order I can, before I can sign them off, before they can take their test to become a paramedic. So they might have their 480 hours, but they're at 35 critical patients. They need to keep going until they get They gotta 40. keep going. Okay, that 480 hours is the bare minimum. Okay. And then you become, uh, and the difference is paramedic and AMT. AMT has certificate, paramedic has a license. Okay. And paramedic is licensed and paramedic works under a doctor license. Mm, okay. AMTs does do too, but, uh, you know, paramedics are basically at our extension of a hospital mm -hmm. in a field, basically. So okay. uh, as a paramedic, if you have any questions, you can call, contact a doctor, a physician at the emergency room and, uh, we call it base hospital physician contact mm -hmm. and you can consult about whatever issues you have or questions whatnot sometimes there's descriptions sometimes there are certain things they're kind of not a black and white they're kind of in a gray area yeah, yeah, yeah. and you got to figure out and you got to ask the doctor hey doc uh i have a question what do you think yeah, yeah. this is what i think what do you think and doctors say yeah i agree or say you know what let's just bring the patient in example being i had a patient and i said a doctor, I don't think this patient's gonna make it. Mm -hmm. And the doctor says, I think you should bring that patient in. And mm -hmm. I did. And as soon as I brought this patient in, within a few minutes, the doctors declared him. Mm -hmm. That happens. I'm not being, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I could have declared the patient at, 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 at the scene. However, the doctor chose that there might be something else done. And the doctor did the same thing what I did. He yeah, yeah. administered same medications. But then sometimes it, it happens, but yeah, yeah. you know what? Uh, I, I feel comfortable, you know, either way it would have been fine. However, a doctor felt more comfortable with, uh, you know, bringing the patient into the hospital, mm -hmm. which we did, and that was perfectly fine. Okay. So things do happen. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of stories which I cannot yeah. get into for <laughs> reasons for time, but okay, um, all that. So we talked a little bit about education. We get our education down. Um, you get your EMT, okay. then you get your paramedic license. How do how do I apply to a fire department? Do I just walk in? I mean, uh, 
usually fire department and their uh, website firehire.com firecareers.com uh, they offer jobs for firefighters mm -hmm. and usually uh uh, if you're an AMT and uh, additional, what I would recommend uh, just beyond your AMT, maybe take some fire science or fire technology classes through college. Mm -hmm. Colleges do also offer fire academy. Mm -hmm. You get your firefighter one certificate, you have a higher chance to get hired. As a okay. paramedic, mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot higher chance to get hired over AMT, specifically for the departments who are trying to get right. paramedics in. As a paramedic, but uh, additional training as far as uh, fire science classes and also uh, fire academy and firefighter certificate. You have the, the more experience you have, the more higher chances you can get okay. hired on. And also, we partner our department specifically partners with Kasunas River College, mm -hmm. and we have their students go through our internship. We call it fire internship program. Oh, okay, nice. And they also come into the fire station. Mm -hmm. They do ride-alongs. They live a station life with us for 24 hours. So they're exposed to to the real ways of a firefighter. Everything that we do, they get to do, you know, it's not uh, uh, almost everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have a major fire and it's very dangerous, we'll ask not to come in. Right. Like if we have if we have a grass fire and it's it's manageable, they'll be able to take a nozzle and fight grass fire, vehicle mm -hmm. fire. So they get to, they get full exposure. Okay. They get to see everything we get to see. Nice. Which is great. Um i've heard of like volunteer stations there are volunteer space stations our department does not have that mm -hmm. in sacramento county there are a few wilton fire department has volunteer stations walnut grove mm -hmm. harold those southern uh count departments in southern uh sacramento county mm -hmm. i'm sure there are some in placer county as well mm -hmm. i don't really know exactly which ones Okay. But they were, uh, you can definitely get in those, and uh, that is a great experience as well. Not probably not going to get paid. Some department might compensate for something, but right. definitely a great experience. So, if you say if you have like if you're an EMT, you can be uh, working on an EMT and then volunteer as a fire at a, at, a, at a fire station. Exactly. Is that experience valuable? I mean, very valuable. Okay. It, you cannot put a price on experience. Okay. Uh, I can have a certificate said I, that I've taken a class once yeah. versus I have a certificate that I did so many hours at the fire station and mm -hmm. I've been exposed to, and then maybe a letter of recommendation from one of their station captains or firefighters that is a lot has a lot more value than some kind of cert. I'm not saying education is bad or anything yeah, yeah. or some kind of certificate, but that puts more value on someone it. vouching for you yeah certificate let's just say let's put in dollar amount yeah. certificate might worth a hundred dollars and firefighter experience and as a volunteer with a ladder recommendation might worth like a thousand dollars okay so you put you a little bit higher on yeah, that yeah. list you nice. know at the end of the day if you think about it the chiefs and the captains who are in involved in the hiring process yeah. they get to pick and they're like well this guy has this much you know if you take all you know all guys look pretty good but this guy has this much and this guy has to offer a lot more you know chances are the guy has to get to offer more mm -hmm. uh, more likely will get a job what what does the interview look like is it like your regular job interview or how, how do they interview i mean do they make you do pull-ups push-ups so the process is uh, it's a very good question uh, it's it's a multi-step process. It's not a single step. When you, um, example, being when I wanted to get a job at the pizza, I worked for a pizza down the sh not too far from here. Yeah. As a pizza driver, I walked in and I talked to a manager. Say, hey, I'd like to get a job here. My buddy works here. He's the one probably who uh, who we already talked to. Mm -hmm. he, and we sat down. We talked, and he says, "Can you come in day after tomorrow at five o'clock?" Sure. Okay, well, uh, when you come in, we'll uh, give you a t-shirt and we'll get your training done. That yeah. was very, you know, yeah. uh, it was a good experience for me. And yeah. I'm not saying it's a job, right? Yeah, right. It doesn't matter what kind of job, you, it's an honest living yeah. or just the extra money that you make honestly, which yeah. which should make you should, anyone should feel be good proud. about it, yeah. right? Be proud of. And I'm proud of, you know, even though I was a, just a pizza driver, it doesn't so care. You gotta start but, somewhere. But guess what? As a pizza driver, I had to look for an address as yeah. a paramedic as a firefighter we still get to look for the address right <laughs> the same so you kind of under stress something so yeah um back to the question you you asked me uh could you i kind of forgot already yeah, yeah so um the interview process so the process okay so very simple uh apply for a job mm -hmm. take a written test okay 
physical agility test. Okay. So it could be uh, pull the hose, mm -hmm. dummy drag, mm -hmm. uh, run up and down the stairs or walk okay. up and down the stairs, uh, pull the hose with the rope, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Up and down, right? You could climb area ladder type of ideal. So physical activity test. Uh, now, currently there's standardized called CPAT test, which is also here in Sacramento area. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they actually, you can look it up CPAT test and that's a physical agility test. And they, you can walk, you can look it up online and you, mm -hmm. they'll walk you through exactly what the physical agility test is. Okay. You can fail if you, if you look at it. Yeah. You, you look know, at it, train yourself. You, you train yourself. You can fail. Right. And the next step, step, once you pass that, it's a, usually oral interview mm -hmm. and it's a panel. So you might have a few different individuals, uh, mm -hmm. three or four, three or five, depending on the fire department. And they might ask you the different questions. When I walked in, they asked me specific questions and I was like, oh, I'm, I am getting a job in the fire department, but also they asked me paramedic questions mm -hmm. and they can say, well, can you show us what AKG is? And mm -hmm. can you draw on a piece of board uh, on a piece of paper and show us what, what it means to you? And I told mm -hmm. them, okay, this is what it means to me. What not? And they can ask me, can you tell me protocol based on, you know, uh, this experience if you have this kind of patient you know mm -hmm. and then kind of situational questions you okay. have this kind of experience you know you have a patient who needs to go to this ambulance uh, with the ambulance to this hospital but there's issue and you know how would you deal so kind of situation questions how would you react to specific situ situations okay. fire station life you know a guy borrowing your cds because he wants to play your music right yeah, yeah. and how would you handle it mm -hmm. you know or somebody hands you money and says go put it in my you know house Mm -hmm. You know, and somebody says, well, you know, where'd you get the money from? You know, it's a lot of situational questions, okay. a lot of questions. How would you at react? You know, obviously, honestly, they want, to, they want you to be honest and yeah, yeah. see your honest, you know, feedback. And then once you pass that, they offer you a chief. When somebody says, I'm going to chief oral interview, yeah. it's a big deal. Oh, wow. Chances are you are getting a job. Okay. Once you go to chief oral interview and if chief says, okay, we are offering you a job. Mm hmm you are gonna get a job, but you're gonna pass a background test and medical exam test and psychological test. Oh, wow. You gotta pass those. And that entire process may take about six months from the day you fill, it, fill out an application to the, to the day you go on into academy. And then the academy, first day of your, your academy, once you have a conditional job offer, mm -hmm. you start academy and it's like Christmas, you know? For me, it was Christmas. I got all <laughs> turnout gear, I got a helmet. I got all kinds of stuff. I was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was amazing. Now, about six months academy, and you get to learn a lot of lot of stuff. Okay. Now, you're becoming a firefighter. You get in another apartment. You get, your job is to be in the academy. You're getting paid to be trained in the academy, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Once you finish your academy, you graduate. Yeah. And you have one year and a half of probation as a firefighter in department. And once you pass your probation, you're fully qualified firefighter. Wow, you're not a, like you were saying, licensed to kill <laughs> when you're becoming a paramedic. But it, it's nice that, um, that, I mean, it sucks that the process takes so long, but it's nice knowing that, you know, they really care about who they hire. And you were saying we only hire honest people and people with good records, uh, good criminal records or no criminal records, good driving right. records and all, and all this type of stuff. Um, I I think I think what you've shared today is gonna help out a lot of people because some people want to join the the service or become a firefighter, become a paramedic. They don't know where to start. Maybe they don't have somebody in their family that's been in the fire, you know, mm -hmm. in, in in the fire service, and nobody's shared these things with them. So uh, the info you've shared is very very valuable to to many Thank people, you. and I bet you know you can't you can't. You can't find this kind of info only on this podcast. I mean, nobody's right. out there sharing. And sometimes people are intimidated by a firefighter. You know, they're usually big, strong men with a bunch of gear. And like, I don't even know what to ask this man. Um, so definitely appreciate it. I want to thank, thank you for you. coming on today and My sharing pleasure. your experience. Thank you. Yeah. And um, also, if you guys have any questions, um, just comment below or DM us and we can forward them to Oleg. Anything definitely. specific. And Oleg sounds like a very informative man. I'll be more than happy to assist. Yeah. And I've sat down with many guys in from our community. And yeah. uh, we had a cup of coffee. We had a little talk. And some of the guys that I uh, sat down with, they are currently working as a firefighter. Oh, nice. And paramedics in the area. Okay. Or in Sacramento or greater area or Bay Area. Okay. Awesome. Thank you again. Thank you so You're much welcome. for your service. And uh, keep up the good work, if I can say that. 
Thank you. Thank All you. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you.